Okay. Hello, and welcome to another episode of STS. We are at Origins Parkour Facility. I'm Renee Scavington, and this is Alyssa Serpa joining us today for an exciting talk. I think mostly today we're going to be covering the Apex International. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, you made me watch Ian Williams' video yesterday. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. How come, how come you thought I should watch that video? It got or why shared should, why should other Why should other people watch that video? <laughs> why should other people in general? Well, it's, it's relevant okay. to the parkour community because a lot of people got really into it and a lot of people shared it. So that's reason one. Reason two is it's, it's cultural commentary, right? Like he's, he's basically playing on all these stereotypes. And even if you don't have a laugh out moment with it, I think mm. you still might see a few things and go, yeah, that, that's true. And it's enjoyable to watch just because of that. Yeah. Cool. There's nothing, because uh, he gets, uh, it's pretty, uh, is, is, is misogynist the right word? In a, in a satirical <laughs> sense. But. What, do you, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like his, his character? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just call it like a douchey character. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I mentioned uh, I mentioned that I felt like he's uh, basically trying to be Don Mazzetti. Yeah. Yeah. When it, like it's the first two seconds of it, I yeah. was like, oh, that's a that's a Don voice or a or a fake Jersey accent. Yeah. Exactly. And when you said when you said Dom, I didn't know who he was by name, but then you showed mm -hmm. me a video, and I'm like, oh, okay, that guy. Yeah, I've seen his videos before, but. I didn't make the connection when I first watched Ian's video. Mm -hmm. So I actually had this moment of like, wait, isn't Ian from Southern California? Like, why is he using a New Jersey accent to be a douchey character? Like, is he trying to say something about people from Jersey? Like, yeah, it wasn't yeah, really I feel, sure. I feel like that's a pretty well-known stereotype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess, it, I guess it is, but I was like. Ever since Jersey Shore. Yeah, 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 of course. At least with, with Dom, like my impression of him was that he was at least from that region. So he had a little bit more. Uh, like it came by a little bit, or he came by it a little bit more honestly. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess knowing where that reference is is pulling from, and that he's kind of doing the same format as Dom and pointing out the stereotypes of his pastime and his community, that that makes a little bit more sense. If he's clearly like uh, creating or using that sort of model. Yeah, I th I think he gave uh, some notion as that he's going to continue doing these videos. Yeah. Or, or yeah. at least, uh, I think he started it saying this is bad tutorials or something. I'm not sure if that's the official title, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's really cool if he if he keeps doing them. Because uh, yeah. I think, I don't know, any any time I see like on a couple shows ago we were uh, talking with Tom about uh, the travel show, the the jump and travel. Yeah, yeah, I still see that. I just get stoked any time a new idea or a new kind of piece of media comes out in parkour because I mm -hmm. feel like it's, it's just a sign that the, the industry is growing or the, the culture is growing, the community is growing. If we're able to <laughs> have these things come out and be popular and have like tons of views. so Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think, as I said a few moments ago, like the cultural commentary, it's like, okay, wow, our community is at that point where... I guess, I guess 20 years ago, without social media, we might not have had the level of tightness that we do with, with cultural similarity, but mm -hmm. we, we kind of do. So it's, it's neat to see someone pointing that out and playing off yeah. it. I noticed today, too, you're, you're fitting some of the, the, the cool, cool guy at the jam stereotypes. Oh, yeah, you got for the sure. shaved on the sides. Yeah. You yeah. got the skinny joggers on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It hit home for sure. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, oh, I'm definitely succeeding. What do you mean? No, I'm just, I'm just living up to his tutorial. Mm. Like I'm just, there yeah. You go. yeah, I took it to heart. It's a sign of success. This is all new. I, I haven't looked like this before today. I just saw that video last week and yeah. yeah. No, he does a very good job of describing like your typical people at a jam. So it's super funny. Yeah. Cool. I agree. So Apex International yeah. uh, was announced uh, last week and we didn't do a, a talk episode or anything. Uh, I tried to get a little bit of uh, information from, from Amos um, mm -hmm. about it because he seems to be the, the man behind it all uh, mm -hmm. or organizing the event. So uh, first thing I actually just wanted to talk about was, uh, was the lineup and uh, kind of what, what you thought about both, I guess, the, the invited uh, female competitors and the invited male competitors uh, being in a speed comp and being an invitational versus a versus a qualifier. Yeah, well, I think all the athletes there for the most part 
they're they're known to the community some more much more than others um, but they're all they're all names um, so in that respect like as as someone who is on that list I'm like really excited to do the competition and meet a lot of the people that I admire or have wanted to meet or train with for a long time and even if it's just hey we're all going to be in a room we're all going to be you know putting ourselves to the test and cheering each other on I'm really excited to do that so um, but as far as as far as who specifically made it onto different lists um, I was wondering how they picked that I was wondering how they picked that and uh, Danny Marmalejo I, I don't know did you see his comment on the original yeah, video I actually felt kind of bad when he said that because I, I do it's 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 tough. I do kind of agree that uh, he and and Dyer are overlooked. Mm -hmm. They they do quite well in competitions, both in uh, freestyle skill, uh, speed. We all we always try to get him out to NEPC. Like we tried to get him out last year, and then he kind of had to bail last minute because of finances. Mm -hmm. And I haven't actually reached out to him this year. So as soon as I oh, saw shoot. that, yeah. I was like, oh man, kind of a bummer. Because yeah. uh, but we do, we're not doing. Um, we're not doing any North American invites this year for NEPC, so everything mm -hmm. is everything is through the qualifiers. Uh, we've reserved a couple spots for international invites right. just to kind of bring that in because there's there's been some interest. We've had requests, so yeah, yeah, that's exciting. That's yeah. exciting. Though. <laughs> well, it's hard. It's hard to make it exciting because nothing's happened yet. So oh, okay. Yeah. Can't I reveal like yeah, who I don't these have requests the, came from. Uh, I mean, Kai Willis. Nice. Kai Willis is he confirmed? Uh, no, okay. not gonna, it's uh, like, again, it's not, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it because, because right, last okay. year we had, um, you didn't hear that. Like last year we had DK confirmed. Right. Basically. And, oh yeah. And then his, his he had an issue with finances. Mm -hmm. So mm. I think, I think Danny actually, he requires a visa mm -hmm. to come to Canada. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think he required a visa one year. Mm -hmm. So, so that's definitely an issue. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay. I gotta, I gotta reach out to him and see how he feels about it. But you were. Um, yeah, I was, I was trying to lead you somewhere with that mm -hmm. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Won't deny it. Um, so, anyways, he wrote that comment, and then Apex. I don't know, like, who wrote that post on behalf of Apex, but Apex's response was something to the effect of, you know, we've, we've invited athletes who have, you know, proven themselves on previous, um, like, significant mm -hmm. speed courses or competitions and for some of the athletes I'm not sure what that is and it could just be my lack of knowledge so I'm going to put that out there like it might just be I didn't hear about that competition that yeah. this athlete did or this athlete did but there are definitely some athletes on the list that I'm like okay what what competition did they do like what, where was their proving ground do you yeah. find the same I think it's almost like uh, so there's no term for it but it's almost like people like to play video math, like oh mm. this this team had this dope video and they look fast, right? And they you know do well on this scene versus you know because you can't until you get the same athletes on the same course you can't really tell and I've I've been surprised all the time, mm -hmm. uh, you know parkour speed comps have uh, I think been popularized for almost a, a year now or sorry ten years now was a year now. Great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No ten. Sorry, ten. <laughs> like, I meant to say I meant to say ten. <laughs> anyway, about a, about a about a decade now, I think uh, parkour speed comps have been kind of ran uh, throughout uh, throughout the world and just kind of developed. And I, I've always been surprised. Uh, like yeah. I had no idea. Uh, Johan's one of those guys on the list, mm -hmm. and he he has an impressive resume when it comes to speed comps, yeah. and that, I feel like that's a mistake, just mm -hmm. because he's not he hasn't released a lot of popular videos now. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, but he is he is a fast dude. Yeah. Uh, NAPC first year, I think he was second place in the the second speed comp. The first one, the first speed comp had elimination. So if right. you like fell in the foam pit, I mean, yeah. don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and these are tricky things too. Like uh, when it comes to uh, parkour speed comps, people don't actually know what they're getting into all the times. The uh, what we're trying to do with uh, uh, the sport parkour league site is is set up all the information about the events on there so people know kind of what to expect from a course. Like, is mm -hmm. the ground going to be lava? Mm -hmm. Is it, what happens if I miss a checkpoint? How long can I expect the courses to be? You know, these things mm -hmm. matter a lot. It's going to affect your training. Yeah. It's going to affect your training for yeah. sure. Like, you know, if I know, 
that there's probably not going to be mm -hmm. much ground is lava to speak of. I know that I can work on accelerating movements where I'm like just on flat ground or accelerating into vaults or making those connections on flat ground. If I know that courses that I'm going to be running on are mm -hmm. primarily going to be stay out the lava, like that means that that kind of training that I just mentioned isn't going to be as helpful because I'm going to probably have to be balancing on a bar or on top of something. And so I'm going to need to get comfortable accelerating in those types of scenarios. So. Yeah. I don't know if that's true for everybody, though, no? in terms of it's going to affect. Yeah, I, d I don't see Alex Shower adjusting his mm -hmm. training for. Yeah. And, and I think that's actually a problem. It's maybe there's not enough incentive there, but mm -hmm. I just don't I don't see him putting out Instagram clips. Uh, I mean, that might happen, but I don't see it happening. Yeah. <laughs> Basically putting out Instagram clips leading up to the event. You know, here's me getting ready for the speed comp. Right. Because he's never done that for Red Bull. He's never done that for anything yeah. else he's been in. Uh, same with a lot of the other guys uh, on yeah. the list. So. That's a good point. Like, it might, I'm, I might actually be, like, an unpopular thing to, mm. to actually train for competition, like, kind of hearkening mm. back to the old, like, anti-competition days where yeah. it's like, oh, like, you're going to take it so seriously that you're going you're gonna to train for it leading up to it? Like, ooh, like, maybe, maybe some people are going to be like, oh, she takes it too seriously. And it's, it's not that I'm all about winning. I just want to do my best. So why wouldn't I prepare for this thing that I want to do my best at? Yeah. So, but like, I think no, some people. I'm just gonna <laughs> keep. Uh, you know, I I felt like before the comp, I would just do a month of singles, like you know, just do comped pre's and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and standing jumps, you know, because I felt like that would be the good training for it. Yeah. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I hope I hope I'm not unpopular for saying that, but like, no, I absolutely do try to prepare for, for competition. Sometimes I might have an injury or something that unfortunately gets in the way. That definitely. Happened to me last summer, right in the middle of competition season. I sort of had two abdominal injuries, like in like one happened, and then like I was pretty much recovered. And then three weeks after the first one, I got another one, and it, it really hindered my training because it was like you know right in my lower abs, so it made running and jumping pretty much out of the picture for at least two weeks each time, yeah. um, and that really messed me up. And for people who were there at Apex last year, you saw like just how bad my uh, my sort of general like respiratory capacity was. Mm -hmm. So that's something I don't want to happen again yeah. this year. <laughs> but yeah, it happens to the best of us, right? Don't want to gas out through it. No. <laughs> halfway through the course. Yeah, my legs were jello like halfway through. It was it was an interesting experience though actually. <laughs> well you got I, I remember you you finished the course on that one too. So yeah. you know there's a little bit of overcoming adversity I hope. <laughs> yeah, no no it no no it, it's not something that I look back on with like any like dire regret or anything mm -hmm. and I you know I finished it even though I I totally biffed like a mid portion of the course but yeah I still don't want to don't want to biff anything I at least want to keep some momentum all the way through. Yeah. Uh, I, I think with this invitational list some interesting things we're going to see is uh, potentially athletes being exposed mm -hmm. I think happens a lot mm -hmm. you know they get they develop either a big following from videos or just from things they've done and then they show up at a speed comp, I've seen it happen before, they show up at a speed comp and they're not quite what they were maybe a year ago or they're not quite mm. just built for, for speed competitions. A lot of people don't have the nerve for it because it's, it's go, go, go. You don't have, yeah. a, you, you might have some time for practice depending on the event. Uh, Apex usually gives a little bit of practice time mm -hmm. for speed courses, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious to see who, who basically gets uh, gets exposed as being not not that fast. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's high pressure, and you don't get to you don't get to rep things over and over again. Like you're talking about the video math, like that that mm. concept, and like yeah, in in a lot of cases, I'm sure in videos, people have practiced this line, and or even if they haven't like practiced it before they start shooting, mm. maybe throughout the various takes that they're taking of that line, they're getting practice, right? So they're they're learning like where those connections are and how their transitions can be smoother and smooth equals fast generally, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that. of course, people are bound to look fast in videos, but can you can you do that with limited practice time, but also with, you know, a little bit of pressure, even if you're not putting pressure on yourself to win and you're just trying to be fun, like, there's still an audience there. There's still probably a lot of people that you admire, or you admire, rather, and really respect, so... I know for me, like at, at NAPC last year, my qualifying run of that first course was a lot faster and smoother than my actual run in the event. Right. Like I watched the run in the event and I'm like, oh, 
uh, like there's definitely a few a few parts where I like kind of trip up or mm -hmm. or didn't get my steps quite right, and I managed to luck out, but it, it could have cost me, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about that was actually I think a big detail of this event that I don't actually hear anyone talking about. It's just kind of an accepted thing, but uh, the the prize money, it's, mm -hmm. it's a good it's a good pot of cash. They're, they're putting in uh, 14K. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Amos told me that's all coming from Apex, which is awesome. Yeah, so there's good no, job, guys. So there's no sponsors for this event. They're taking some, uh, um, some I guess, money they've, you know, Apex is a pretty big empire, so they're taking some of that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that money they have, uh, as well as, you know, from ticket sales for the event and stuff like that to, yeah. to put into that. Uh, but equal prize money for uh, uh, men and women divisions. Uh, mm -hmm. And I asked him about that. I said, I said, you know, it's, why, why was this an important thing to do? And uh, his, his response was, uh, it's not, it's something in other sports that is, uh, there, there's a divide. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you probably know more about this than I do, but, uh, but it's, in terms of like the job market, there's, yeah. there's definitely like a, a, a wage gap, I think it's referred mm -hmm. to. Uh, and, I, and I think he's just trying to, or they're, they're trying to set an example yeah. Um, but I don't necessarily know if I agree with it being a good idea in this context. Mm -hmm. And okay. I feel like <laughs> there's probably only a few people that, that see it that way right now. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to know uh, your take, like what your thoughts on just seeing that announced were. Yeah. Well, I, I think it definitely came off the way that, like you're saying, Amos said that he's trying to set an example with it. And like, yeah, it's. I know it's a it's a huge there's a huge wage gap between men's sports and women's sports. Part of it is there's a lot more media around men's sports. They they make a lot more money. I think it's kind of unfortunate that we live in a culture where you know men's athleticism is more valued than women's, or people find it more entertaining. I mean, yes, you can say like, oh, well, they're they're stronger and they're moving faster and stuff, but. If you've ever watched like men's hockey versus women ho women's hockey, I've spoken to hockey players with numbers of backgrounds, mm -hmm. men and women alike, and m many have said like, "Oh, I love watching like the women's Olympic hockey hockey team because mm -hmm. the way that they manipulate the puck and the way that they play is so much more technical." I um, want to say it's soccer too. Yeah, uh, the U.S. Uh, female soccer team had apparently record-breaking ratings um, in the last like World Cup. So. Yeah. There you go. So, so I mean, so I'm just saying, like, that argument isn't necessarily valid to say, like, oh, well, men are stronger, so they're more interesting to watch, or whatever mm. it may be. Like, it's also a very big generalization, but mm. that's not actually true across the board. So you start to wonder, well, it's, it's, it's a cultural thing, and it's a perception thing. So um, I think my impression of it, seeing that the prize money was equal, was, okay, like, I think this is something that Apex values, and they're wanting to set the standard, or they're wanting to at least put those values into action. And I think that's really cool. Um, and another thing to think of is if you're in a sport, you know, if I was a woman just starting parkour today and I, you know, had some athletic background or, or was like, wow, I'd really like to take this somewhere, that would be very encouraging to see, you know, a major competition offering equal prize money for men and women. Like that would encourage me if I had wanted to pursue it as more of a career, like that would encourage me to keep going. Uh, the biggest thing that stands out to me, and it's, it has nothing to do with gender, mm -hmm. is uh, just the concept of divisions mm -hmm. and the competitiveness of each division. Yeah. The men's division has twice as many uh, invitational athletes as the women's division. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like as a, if I was on that list of dudes competing, I was like, wait, I got to beat... I gotta beat like <laughs> 10, 12 of these of murderers row of, mm -hmm. of, of dudes that are, that are fast <laughs> versus, uh, you know, the, the female uh, uh, division, which, yeah, has like six, there's, there's six of y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and that's the thing is you, and I, it's not that they, uh, I got a message actually from Cordelia uh, oh. uh, like a few weeks ago about uh, qualifiers for NPC and she was kind of asking, same kind of questions about, uh, hey, I noticed, you know, there's not many, you're not putting through as many females uh, per event for qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Is it because you don't think it's going to be very exciting? And I said, well, no, it's just, I can't name enough females that would do well on, on like that level of competition unless you start making, hey, 
okay. time, but we'll finish this topic. Yeah. Unless okay. you unless you start making changes on on the courses and which it almost comes off as degrading. It's like, all right, we're just yeah. gonna take a minute to adjust all the jumps and make them smaller. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think we had that experience, like you tried it, you tried it in the 2013 NAPC and like mm -hmm. you got the feedback and that was how a lot of us felt running that course. I can mm -hmm. say us, cause I ran, I ran those adjusted courses. I had the stomach flu, so I think I did go for the adjusted yeah. ones, but, but yeah, it, it also, you know, it divided the, the division and everything like that. And it's funny, like I knew we were going to talk about this today and that was something that I knew would come up is the competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And I, it's one of those things that like, I, I completely agree with you. Like if I was in the men's division, I'd be like, oh geez, like I like how you called it, like the murderer's row. <laughs> like, Some because, dudes yeah, in that absolutely. Like, ooh, <laughs> I'd be shaken. Um, but at the on the other hand i can i can appreciate it as as a gesture of you know we believe that there can be big women's divisions and we're just gonna you know even if it's not there we're gonna build it and they will come uh, that could be yeah kind of I, their perspective i yeah. can see it and it's, I, I can kind of see both sides of it yeah i can kind of see and it's and it's um the funny thing i think about it is it's a it's an investment and it's a gamble mm. essentially mm -hmm. and they, they might not see it that way but you you I feel like prize money from a from a promoter or from an organizer standpoint in sport is is an investment. Mm -hmm. you, know, you throw it out there like here's 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 the pot like please guys live up to this like <laughs> amount of cash and, and the thing about parkour is a lot of people don't like to make it about um, that's a big knock on competition is like oh they're doing it for money and so a move like this kind of makes it about the money. Mm. It makes it absolutely about the money because they're doing equal equal prize money. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Or is it just money representing recognition, representing recognition? True. I mean, it, but it's still it's still about you know money is the is the value in this <laughs> in this yeah, case, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Everyone's like, on the same stage and everything too. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think I think that's probably where that choice came from. Is mm -hmm. is we want to show that we we value and recognize them equally. And like, yeah, it's about money, but everything in life like costs something well not everything but you know it, it costs money to go out to competition it costs money to you know potentially cut back your, whatever hours at whatever job that you have so that you can train right mm -hmm. so it's it's showing recognition that like okay you know your time and your your effort is valuable and here you go and I, I think that's positive even even though it is less competitive like I agree I wouldn't have been personally that bothered if if there was like a a ratio like okay so there's like 12 guys and six women so like yeah maybe the women's division only goes up to 1250 or something or whatever that ratio would work out to um like i wouldn't have been that bothered just seeing the competitiveness of the men's division but at the same time i, I appreciate it as i said i appreciate it as a gesture and i think it's it's overall positive and i hope it paves the way for for better recognition for women in parkour uh, and I, I think those are all the those are all the positives, right? Yeah. Um, I, I almost kind of want to look at it as, you know, take 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 gender out of it, take the mm -hmm. the, the whole social consequences sure. and everything sure, out of sure. it, and let's call it uh, something that I thought could develop in parkour, but I don't think ever will, um, and I, I'm not really interested anymore. But weight divisions. Mm. So let's mm -hmm. say you know your parkour competitions get to the point where it's like you got your 180 pound class division mm -hmm. and your 120 pound class division, and the uh, you know, the 120 or 180 pound one maybe is like the more more exciting one or, or got mm. taller taller people in there mm. and stuff doing their thing and you make equal prize money just hoping that, hoping that the little people, <laughs> 120 pound people are, you know, doing, making stuff look bigger and doing more exciting things. But it's, uh, it just doesn't really work that way. It's, it's mm. like, I think, I think it's almost like, okay, let's put this amount of money here and, and hope that it garners like more interest right. from from competitors not necessarily yeah. from an audience but but you know more because like i said the, the female division is like a six person division right and so it's it's kind of a like i said a gamble yeah. putting putting this money out there and saying okay hopefully you know hopefully it, it, it inspires growth in the division but it's almost like you know a, a awarding an, an employee or something without Without actually like an improved, uh, yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> improved work can, ethic. Can you or... explain the the concept of of the gamble to me a little bit more? Okay, so like I see it, I see it as it could go two ways. Mm -hmm. It could either be like, again, uh, it it makes more more females want to want to compete, right? Yeah, um, and then the division grows, mm -hmm. or everyone just trains, or they all just train the same, 
Right. And the pot just stays there and it doesn't become a more uh, competitive division. Like right. I won't even use the word because because that's where yeah, exciting that's, comes from. Is yeah. You want to see in a speed competition, you want to see people neck and neck. That's, yeah, that's an exciting speed competition. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be like, oh, I see Alyssa on there and then a bunch of, you know, questionable <laughs> other competitors or whatever. If they try to because imagine if they tried to grow the division right now. Yeah, you'd have I, like I said, I think you'd have trouble finding enough females on there to make it uh, to make it competitive. Yeah. I mean, competitive is what makes it exciting, yeah. not necessarily the. No, I mean, as ability. as I said, as I said earlier, like I I wouldn't have been bothered if if the mm -hmm. prize money affect or reflected more the division sizes and the competitiveness. Like I think it's hard to say because some of these athletes we haven't seen them do speed comps like that were that well publicized if if anything like i know there's a couple i'm, I'm like when was your last speed comp or have you done one um but maybe they just weren't publicized that well um but at this point where we haven't seen that it's hard to know exactly like who we can expect will be neck and neck in the women's division especially but even in the men's division some of them it's, it's not totally clear um so Given that, if we say, okay, we, well, we can't tell who's going to be neck and neck, but we can at least look at the size of the, the division, I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a smaller division. I'm, whoever wins the ladies' division is going to have to beat less people than whoever wins the men's division. And so it would make sense to me if it was smaller, but that's a very rational perspective. And I, again, I'm not saying like that's wrong at, at all. Like I agree with that. But from like a, you know, you know, what is your like values and what are you trying to see and make change in the world. I think that's the route that they chose to go. Um, maybe they wouldn't put it that way. Maybe I'm like giving them too much. I don't know. But that's that's sort of no, I mean, that's it. essentially what, what Amos said. It's like, okay. this is what, you know, the world is like right now in sports, and this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. It's a gamble. It's a gamble. <laughs> yeah. like, I, feel, I feel like it just, it doesn't, it's an odd timing. It's an odd way mm -hmm. to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost like would, again, like, Base uh, base prize money on on just you know how many how many good competitors you can get versus yeah yeah <laughs> versus sure. their gender but. proportional prize money from the pot based on division size and yeah that could be part of it for sure <laughs> for sure no, yeah. I I don't think either way is wrong it's yeah. just I, I feel what like you I feel like after we put this out I'm gonna get like a bunch of hate messages <laughs> from from people mostly dudes actually I'm yeah. sure yeah they're gonna call and tell me I'm insensitive and. <laughs> 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 well, I'm not. I'm not personally hurt, <laughs> for the record. Cool. All right. Okay, I think that's it for today. Uh, yeah, I'll let you get out of here. But uh, thanks for talking to me. Absolutely. And uh, we'll hopefully me. see you guys next week. <laughs>